Now, good morning. It's not good morning. Whatever it is, welcome to the court of the EDI Jester. It's great to see you and I hope uh, you'll enjoy this short but interesting sojourn into the panties of the um, Health Secretary for America, <laughs> Dr. Rachel Levine. Now, some of you will know Dr. Rachel Levine or heard about them, right? Okay? It's a he. Okay. Dr. Levine. Now, I come across this article from The Guardian. The Guardian. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. I apologise, all right? I don't even apologise when I do the Daily Fail. But when I do The Guardian, I apologise. If I ever do The Independent, you can send an, send an assassin to shoot me. All right? Okay? How low can you go? The Guardian. I'm going no lower than The Guardian. So buy me a coffee, usual stuff. Become a warrior teacher, usual stuff. Right? Okay, so here we go, right? Now. And it's an article from 2021. On the 28th of December, who wants this as a bloody Christmas present, right? From, from Ed Pilkington. Dr. Levine discusses why debates over trans rights are so toxic and how the climate crisis will widen health disparities. This year has been excruciating for many Americans who have been battered by COVID, extreme weather disasters and political discord. But for one individual, 2021 will be remembered for having propelled her, her, into national prominence. The Guardian, say. Rachel Levine... The man has shattered not one but two major glass ceilings this year. In March, he became the first openly transgender person to win confirmation in the US Senate after Joe Biden nominated him as Assistant Secretary of Health. Right, so a man became Secretary of Health. And that's, according to The Guardian back in 2021, is something that we should all get behind and say, oh, he's broke a ceiling. What ceiling has he broken? Right, he hasn't broken a ceiling at all. What he's done is he's put on the garb of what he thinks is a woman, and Biden's gone, yeah, we'll have some of that. Fell over the other day, didn't they? See him go? Biden took a tumble. A tumble. The Biden tumble. Which is, I mean, he's in his, for God's sake, the man's ancient. I hope he wasn't hurt. Was he hurt? Does anybody know if he was hurt? I bloody hope not. But, it's, you know, I don't like the bloke. I think he's a, a nut job lunatic. I think he's a dangerous. I think he's a Bond villain. But it'd be like the most incompetent Bond film ever, wouldn't it? You can imagine. No, Mr. Bond, I want you to... Oh, I've tripped. <laughs> And what's your plan, Biden? I'm going to saturate the world with men in dresses. You know, what would you call it? James Bond, the TRA who loved me. Well, it, oh, come on. That's got to be a thing. How about gold fingering? <laughs> Diabetes are forever. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it, eh? For your chaps, I only. Come on, join in. Why not? It's fun. It's phone. It's phone. Phone. It's fun. There must be more. Come on. Go on. What is there? Come on. Help me out. Eh? Moon faker. Ah! <laughs> 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 Stop it, Barry. Now, come on. This is serious. Is it? Yeah. Because this man is a Secretary of State in America. And he's a full-on TRA, right? In October, she, slash he, was sworn in as the first openly transgender four-star officer. It's been a heady month, having been plucked from relative obscurity as Health Secretary of Pennsylvania. Weird, isn't it? I wonder why he was plucked from relative obscurity and what were the reasonings behind that? You know, Biden's well into this as well. So America's got a problem. America's got a serious problem. In an interview, Levine told The Guardian that she slash he, she, see, was touched not only by the honour and privilege of her, her, his new roles, but also by the profound responsibility that I take very seriously. So seriously that you've lied about gender affirming care. So seriously that you've stood by while children are medicalised and sterilised and butchered. So seriously that you wear woman face at work. She added that she would be looking to make an income, both in terms of my advocacy through the LGBTQ plus hands, knees and bumps the daisy people, and also through the policy changes we can make across health and human services and the administration. This is, this is a spider. I mean, a spider right at the very top of the health service in America. Money, money, money. Must be funny in a rich man's world. Couldn't be about money, could it? Do you think it's about money? Tell me in the comments. If you think it's about money, say so. And what is this man up to? 
As the new head of, thi of, a, six, of a 6,000 strong commissioned corps, tasked with leading the federal government's response to a multitude of health crises, Levine now finds him, herself slash himself in the thick of several raging disputes. Most poignantly for her, <clears throat> especially <clears throat> as the highest profile trans official in the country, she is at the centre of the debate around appropriate treatments for individuals considering transgender considering gender transition, especially adolescents. A graduate of Harvard and Tulane School, he was she he was trained as a paediatrician and specialised in adolescent medicine at Penn State. As such, he she has both personal and professional skill in the game. Levine said her his starting point when thinking about trans youth was how at risk they are. Transgender youth are very vulnerable. He said they are vulnerable to being bullied, to discrimination and harassment. Right. Sensitive and supportive medical care has overwhelmingly positive outcomes, he said. There is so much evidence that trans youth, when they are supported by their family and community and receive the standards of care treatment, they have excellent physical and mental health outcomes. That is a lie. Told in October 2021 by a man LARPing as a woman who should know better. Where'd you go from here, say? That's what the desperation in 2021. You think. Really? Is this where we're at? Is it? There are no trans kids. There are no trans adolescents. There are only children in distress. That's it. This is from a paediatrician. We've seen this happening now with GLAD and getting their nonsense into medical schools. We've seen medical, medical schools falling for this. We've seen affinity groups set up around medicine and around STEM generally. And these affinity groups are starting to get the tail to wag the dog because the universities haven't got the cobblers to say, if you're a member of this group, we're going we're gonna to kick you out of the university. Right? Universities shouldn't be supporting this lunacy. Now, we've also seen, which is interesting, um, Dr. Ahmed is becoming the government's free speech. So I, had the, I had the absolute pleasure of speaking um, to Dr. Ahmed right at the very beginning, really, of when I first realised something was terribly wrong. And he is a most reasoned and very likeable chap, also intelligent and with the background required to carry out a role such as that as a free speech champion. I still have a problem with it. Because he's come out and said, you know, you can have both sides of the debate. That's no problem at all. You know, I mean, it's difficult. If this debate, if this debate is about something that's iatrogenic, which has been identified by Cass and is actually damaging children, the most important thing is to stop that first. OK, you don't debate cancer. And a cancerous thing that is on the body politic, that is on the body cultural, that is on the body social, that is damaging everything that we fought for, that's got us where we are. And that is what woke is. Parasitical, cancerous, wicked then I don't know, well, you're not going to debate with the thing that's infesting the body. We have to have a central philosophical vein that we can all get behind, or the vast majority of us can get behind. Equality of opportunity, for example. Diversity of thought. Inclusivity in action, perhaps. The ability to get together and do things, get things done. We've got to get rid of this ridiculous parent oppression narrative stuff and put it to bed once and for all for the religious fervour it has and for the religious thing it is. So I'm with you, you know, I'm just not with you. When it comes to, we can talk to this thing. You can't. It just ha it has to be legislated out of existence. So I'm interested to see what he's going to do. So we've got on one side in America, still there, Levine, right? I wonder what he gets up to. But there's history there in there somewhere. There's something somewhere. We just haven't found it yet, right? Levine. And then we've got Arif Ahmed who's doing work over here, tremendously on free speech in Britain. We are leading the way on this, folks. We are leading the way on the fight back against this insanity there is gender identity, ideology, queer theory, critical race theory, all the woke nonsense, the rubbish, yep, that's being forced upon society by a few very active people, backed by very large money coming from the World Economic Forum and elsewhere, such as pharma and organisations that are attempting to get themselves um, jolly points from various frameworks and boondoggles that have been set up higher up. So they, they, you know, in order to get their funding, they've got to be doing diversity. In order to get their funding, they've got to be supporting trans people. So this whole thing is tied up like a stonewall boondoggle. It's exactly the same model. So we, the UK needs to do something about that. And I think it's a severe um, problem when it comes to free speech, if they're allowed to continue like that. So Levine's quite happy to, you know, say what you want, Rachel. I don't give a toss, right? Except when you lie. Outright lies. Like saying that sterilising, medicalising and mutilating children is a good idea. It actually, it has so many benefits. It doesn't have any benefits at all, you lying tosser. And the worst thing is, I think they knew that back in 2021. But you may disagree with me. Rachel Levine, ladies and gentlemen, 
What does he think he's doing? Ta-da!